Hi guys, Virginia here and I'm back with another 12 by 12 process video for you today and this one's for the Spigger Mum Scraps Design Team and yeah, so I thought I'd get a little bit mixed media -y today and a bit stitchy too. <laughs> um, as you can see I've pulled out one pack of um, sequins, it's called Crafter's Paradise and I do end up pulling in a couple more but what I've done is I've just quickly made a title in my Silhouette Cameo and I've got Crafty at Heart and the word Crafty I wanted to kind of stitch that shape so what I've cut it out, I've traced around it with a pencil, grabbed my little pokey tool <laughs> and pierced a bunch of um, holes for stitching and then I'm going to cover this entire white cardstock with um, gesso and that's going to prime my paper. Um, so I'm doing this first because I'm going to do stitching afterwards and then I'm going to bring in <clears throat> some colour. I had this idea to basically colour the thread. So I'm going to stitch in white. I've got some white embroidery thread here. But I'm going to break it down. Instead of using all six strands, I'm going to use three. And I'm going to do a basic chain link stitch. And I'm going to thread those sequins onto the stitching as well. So I'm just threading my needle. And I'll quickly show you a chain link stitch. You go up through the back the first hole. I'm just going to tape it down and then you go back down that same hole, leave a little loop and then come up through the next hole, through that loop and pull it tight and you end up with a little link. So you repeat that process, go back down that same hole, leave a little loop, come back up that next hole, pull it through and you've got another loop. So I'm going to start threading some of those sequins on now and I particularly wanted to use some of those tiny little scissors in the sequin mix. They are gorgeous and I'm obsessed with them <laughs> so I'm going to add a bunch of them on there. So I've threaded that on, go back down the same hole, come back up the next one, in through that loop and just pull it tight. And I get there, I had a bit of a mess in this one here. So there we go and I've got sequins on them. Okay so I'm going to continue that process back down the same hole, up the next one, through that loop and I'm just going to continue to thread sequins on as I go. So it took me a while, I just basically took it to the living room, sat in front of the TV, I think my husband watched cricket so <laughs> I didn't mind. And there we go, I'm done, there were a bunch of sequins in there. So I've pulled in a few mixes, we've got the Crafter's Paradise, Hexaglam and I Love You More. So this is the idea that I had, I want to bring in the Distress Oxides, They, I tested them out a little bit beforehand, I'm just going through all those colours super quickly. Um, that I've used, I tested them out, I did a little bit of stitching on some white cardstock, I didn't juice on it, it didn't particularly matter, and then I played with the distress socks size to find the colours that I wanted to use, and I wanted to make sure that it was going to work the way I had hoped it would on that thread, and it did, it gives it a beautiful kind of like tie-dyed look on this thread, and I think it's a really fun thing to do, um, and I was a little bit, I'm going to be honest, apprehensive about doing it, <laughs> my uh, love of mixed media is um, not so much a love of mixed media, and I was scared I was going to ruin all of that stitching that I'd spent hours on but in the end I am incredibly happy with it okay so I'm going to go and back this word heart um, I do back the word at as well but I don't end up using it it wasn't really space for it but the, the letter A I'm going to make a shaker pocket and fill with some of those sequins that I've used in the word crafty um, so I've popped acetate behind that and I'm just going to pop all the little inside pieces in the A in the R, so I've just pulled those letters out and popped them in. So, <clears throat> just to add more detail, I'm going to cut those inside bits out of there, the letters, the A's and the R's. I think those kind of little um, finishing touches really kind of define your layout and add to it. So it's worth it for me to take the time to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to form my little shaker pocket on the letter A. I've done this plenty of times, but I'll quickly take you through it. I'm just cutting some thin strips of adhesive foam and making a continuous frame around that shape so that nothing falls out. So just kind of threading it around, adhering it to the back of the acetate. Add another little piece just to finish that bit off and I will do the A as well because I did cut the inside of the acetate out. Just finish that off and then I'll go ahead and back the rest of that cut file with adhesive foam. So I do apologise that this video has sped up incredibly fast. If I didn't you'd be sitting here watching it for a very long time because <laughs> I needed to it was um, 
uh, even and sped up four times. <laughs> it was still 25 minutes long. So, yep. <clears throat> okay, so I'm using the Paige Evans uh, Pink Paisley um, Whimsical Collection uh, for this. Um, if you haven't already guessed, and I'm just going for the 6x6 paper pad, bringing in some of those patterns that I've used to back the word um, heart. And I'm just, I've done the first layer, and I'm bringing in my little notebook punch just for a bit of texture. I'm going to cut this, this is off one of the 12 by 12 pattern papers. I'm going to pop that behind there. It's bringing a pop of blue and some texture. And then I'm going to do a layer of this white heart pattern paper. And then I do bring in that uh, pinky purpley colour here. And I'm just going to do another row of that punched notebook paper. Trim a little bit off. And I'm going to layer that in there just for more texture and another pop of colour. So I'm just going to fit that in there. Pop a little bit of glue so that it stays. This is me absolutely procrastinating putting that Distress Ink <laughs> on the background, by the way. <laughs> I was really, really concerned about doing it. Um, I really didn't want to ruin that stitching. Um, but in the end, I decided to just bite the bullet and do it. So here we go. I'm starting. So I've got a bit of plastic packaging, and I'm just popping a bit of that Distress Ink. I'm not adding too much water because I don't want it to get out of control. I want to really control where the ink is going. So I'm just adding it in. I'm using my brush to kind of spread it around a little bit to dab up any excess. And you can see it's really doing what I wanted it to do, which is colour that thread. So I'm bringing in some blue now. I think this one's Salty Ocean. And I'm being super mindful of what colours I put beside each other because I don't want to end up with any browns um, or yucky muddy colours. I want colours that are going to mix nicely. So pink and blue go beautifully. So does red and blue. They mix and make a purple. So that's fine. I'm going to add this peacock feathers next to the wood blue. So that's okay. Yellow by the peacock feathers which is going to make a more green, greeny colour when they mix. And I'm just kind of continuing to work <clears throat> around that shape and adding colours in we've got um, a bit of spice marmalade then we're bringing in a red I think this is candied apple I like this one because it's a very soft red and when it dries it goes even lighter so it doesn't look like blood on the page I think that's what I love about the Distress Oxide is that they're very muted colours so they're not so in your face like the actual Distress inks or other sprays Okay, so I'm just continuing with those colours. I don't make you watch it all. It's a pretty simple process. Most people have done the packaging technique or have watched it being done. So there we go. I've, all of that word crafty is done. Um, I absolutely love the look. So I'm going to bring that colour down to the bottom where the word heart and my photo is going to be. So I'm just continuing with those colours. I'm bringing in some seedless preserves. The yellow I'm using is fossilised amber. And I do the green one. I'm not sure, I think it, oh I can't remember the name of that one, but it's a really nice soft green as well, so I'm bringing in some blue, I'm going to do some splatters in most of the colours as well, just to get some really intense pops of colour, um, and there we go, that's all done, and you can see when you flip it over, it's coloured the thread as well, which I thought was really cool, <laughs> um, so it's a fun thing, um, it just a thing to be mindful, is if, you, if you use, try this, and you use your heat gun, and you've got sequins there, um, don't directly hold it on the sequins, because they will melt, um, so a lot of that word crafty, I actually dried from the back, I let it sit on my desk for a couple of hours while I went off and did some other things and popped some heavy things on it just to kind of flatten it out and again to try to keep it flat as well because it was still a little bit damp. Um, I've just adhered the entire thing to another piece of white cardstock and that's kind of really helped um, to flatten it out as well. Okay, so now I can get to decorating the page. So I've popped my little uh, word heart back in place. I'm going to pop some sequins from the I Love You More mix. I'm going to add in a couple of scissors from that other mix. And I do bring in a couple of those gold glitter ones from the Hexaglam mix as well. I love them. They are beautiful. <laughs> if I could have a lifetime supply of those <laughs> gold glittery sequins, I would be <laughs> eternally happy. <laughs> Okay, so I've just mucked around, I didn't make you watch it, but I've kind of shaped it so that it fits within the A, and then I'm just going to glue that entire piece down, because there's no point waiting, I know it's going to stay there, I'm going to pop that in place, and here we go, I'm just going to pop something heavy on it, I'm going to grab my stapler, 
and sit that on it so that that uh, glue around the letter A um, seals really well. And I've popped my photo up on a couple of layers of adhesive foam. And this is where I decided that I wasn't going to use that word at that I'd done. And I popped in two glitter foam thickers instead. And I think that was a better touch. It brings in a pop of gold. And I didn't have to try to fit that large word at in there. Okay, so now I can start embellishing the page. I'm going through the die cuts. Wasn't a lot in there that I wanted to use a pair of scissors. I did pop a bunny up there, but that does get taken off later on. I'm going through the sticker book. I really don't need to bring in too much, but I wanted to use this collection because it's got a whole bunch of crafty pieces in it. So I thought that that would be great to the add to the layout. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking for is those pieces there. Um, a little green uh, teal. A faux washi sticker with some stars and I'm going to pop to the left hand side of that photo just for a pop of colour and just continuing to find bits and pieces. This little tag off the sticker sheet I loved and I'm just going to tuck it under that letter T and I thought it was a nice little detail that's kind of hanging off it. Um, just continuing to look for pieces, trying things, trying to get them on the layer. I really want to try and use up as much of this collection that I've got before I buy um, her new ones. So. I'm going to bring in some hearts uh, because we've got lots of those tiny little hearts from the I Love You More sequin mix threaded onto that word crafty. Um, and just continuing to pop pieces, some little crafty sentiments. I did try this needle and thread, but there wasn't really a good spot for it. So it goes back on the sheet, a little cut off of a frame I'm going to tuck up there. And some little push pins. I'm going to go through the chipboard and I'm going to pull off some of these little banners and I tried lining them up under the word heart but it was just getting a bit too much down there. A little jar of crayon so I do end up shuffling them around and I put three under the photo and I think it looks a lot better um, down there. So I've just kind of laid them on top of each other. Um, a little pink chipboard heart. I'm just going to move that. I'm going to pop a flower up there and move that little heart underneath that tag. And now we come in with some paint tubes on the chipboard sheet. It's kind of adding to the crafty feel. Another pair of scissors. So I'm going to pop up there on the photo. And like I said, just continuing to find those crafty elements. We've got some puffy sticker paint tubes, which I'm just going to scatter around. That bunny's been taken off. <laughs> And a little paintbrush. Just really trying to get the balance right. So I'm going to go through the rub-ons now. I'm going to pull off some hearts, emphasising those hearts again. And this little word that says little moments. And I just pop it down there under the photo. So it's kind of um, blending in with that uh, distress oxides. But you can still kind of see it. So it's not so in your face and taking away from that giant word crafty or the photo. Um... A little red butterfly I'm going to pull off and just rub on just in there by that red distress oxide. And I will, will say that those rub-ons go on beautifully over gesso and mixed media. They just went on like a dream, so that was a plus. I'm just shuffling around these paint tubes again, trying to find a good home for them. I did think about popping some up there, but I didn't want to pop too much up there. I didn't want to take away from the beauty that is that <laughs> rainbow word. Okay, a little paintbrush I'm going to move, and I think that that paint tube goes back. Yep. Okay, I'm rather happy with everything, so I'm going to just quickly glue it all down. It's a simple process, just picking it up and gluing. And that's all done, so now I'm going to add these little touches, the little rub-ons. I'm just going to scatter them around the page place. Little pink one, a little red one up there. So just nice little details amongst that those uh, splatters. And some more sequins, why not? Um, I'm using sequins from the same mixes that I used on that thread. And I'm just kind of doing a little bunch down here, like they're spilling out of that shaker pocket. And just scattering a few around the place. Pink ones. Trying to get some nice pops of colour and I'm going to pull out some of those gold 
glittery ones and I'm, I've layered that one on top of a couple that are up there which I thought was nice. I'm just going to continue to add a few more around the page. One up there. And another one up there. And I think that's it. And lastly I'm going to do some splatters of some gold Liquitex acrylic ink just to bring in more gold because why not. <laughs> And then that's it for my layer. So I hope you enjoyed the process and you're inspired to give this a go. I know I'm going to be doing it again, that's for sure. But until next time, bye guys.